David Ruffin. One of the greatest things to ever have happened in the 60s. A voice of a generation, a singer who influenced many and wowed the legends. In an era filled with great singers like Sam Cooke, Marvin Gaye, Stevie Wonder and even Levi Stubbs, you have to give it to him. He stood out, he was special. He took the temptations to the next level. His unique raspy and anguished tenor vocals, coupled with injecting emotions to the lyrics, not forgetting his energetic stage performances, there was no doubt he had a gift, a special gift. But not all tales have happy endings. His journey took a tragic turn after being fired from the group, leading to a downward spiral that ended in his untimely death due to allegedly a cocaine overdose. How did it come to this? Was his death a plan to eliminate him, or was it just a natural occurrence? Many rumors have been spread about his ending, but this, this is the candid and uncensored chilling story of David Eli Ruffin. Born on January 18, 1941 in Wynot, Mississippi, Ruffin was the third-born son in a family of four siblings, three boys and a girl. His father, Elias Eli Ruffin was a Baptist minister and truck driver while his mum, Ophelia Ruffin was a stay-at-home mum. Coming from the rural part of Mississippi, all odds were against him right from birth. To begin with, it was during the Jim Crow laws days, laws which enforced racial segregation. With this, it meant that the blacks were always looked down upon when it came to social amenities such as healthcare. It is to no surprise that the Ruffin lost another sister, Rosine, at infancy. To add salt to the injury, his mother, Ophelia, died just 10 months after giving birth to him. His father would in 1942 marry Aline, a schoolteacher, to help raise the kids. Just like many families in that era, corporal punishment was at its highest, and David Ruffin's father was no exception. He was a strict disciplinarian who heavily believed in the scriptures, spare the rod, spoil the child. Little did he know this would over time, turn to trauma that would later haunt the kids. Throughout David Ruffin's childhood, the whole family toured the South as a family gospel group, with records showing they even opened shows for the likes of the five blind boys of Mississippi, the legendary Mahalia Jackson, among many more. It is here that David Ruffin developed a liking to music. It is here that he learned how to connect to the people, make them smile, and make them feel the music. Apart from the touring, David also sang in the choir at Mount Salem Methodist Church, talent shows and wherever else he could. He didn't limit himself. In 1955, at the age of 14, Ruffin left home under the guardianship of a minister, Eddie Bush, and went to Memphis, Tennessee, with the purpose of pursuing the ministry. He would, the following year, together with the jazz musician Phineas Newborn Sr., head to Hot Springs, Arkansas, where they performed at the 50 Grand Ballroom and Casino. Going by the stage name Little David Bush, he would continue performing in talent shows where he got noticed by the Dixie Nightingales, becoming a member. He would also sing with the Soul Stirrers briefly after the departure of Johnny Taylor. Over this period, he was fortunate enough to cross paths with greats like Elvis Presley, Little Richard, Frankie Lyman, Bobby Womack, the Staple Singers, Swan Silvertones just to name a few. This really opened his eyes and fueled his ambitions even more. He adopted the legendary Sam Cooke and Jackie Wilson as his idols. In 1957, Ruffins moved to Detroit, Michigan together with his guardians Eddie Bush and his wife Dorothy Helen, proved to be a turning point as he transitioned from gospel to secular music, inspired by his idols. He was also reunited with his older brother Jimmy, who was also pursuing a career in music and had just returned from service with the army. During his time in Detroit, Ruffin still going by the name, Little David Bush, together with the Bushes, recorded the songs, You and I, and Believe Me, in 1958 at Vega Records. He got a job to work for Ford Company owned by Berry Gordy Sr., the dad to Berry Gordy Jr. His older brother, Jimmy, signed with Tamla Records, which would later change its name to Motown Records. David on the other hand, managed to work alongside the talented Marvin Gaye, as an apprentice of Anna Records owned by Berry Gordy's elder sister. All through this time, his energy in music was never in doubt. He rehearsed like he was on the big stage. To top it up, he was really down to earth, the yes mom, no mom type. In 1961, he recorded I'm in love and one of these days. This however, did not get the attention he hoped for. The only option was to join Motown, but he didn't know how. Meanwhile, his brother had just concluded a Motortown review tour with The Temptations and noticed the group was lacking tenor voice. The rebellious Elbridge Bryant had just been fired and they desperately needed someone to replace him. He told David about it who in turn shared his interest in joining the group with Otis Williams. 
Otis would take him in after an exhilarating performance display on stage during the label's New Year's Eve party in 1963. Ruffin's first recording session with the group was January 9, 1964. He initially sang backgrounds while the role of lead singer mostly alternated between Eddie Kendricks and Paul Williams. Through his hard work and the eyes of Smokey Robinson, who at the time produced and co-wrote their songs, saw a potential in him and decided to write a song specifically for his voice. The song, My Girl. The song was an instant hit, and became the group's first number one single in 1965 and its signature song too. From then, David Ruffin was officially elevated to the role of lead singer and frontman. The follow-ups were also extremely successful singles, and included the Ruffin-led hits It's Growing, 1965, Since I Lost My Baby, 1965, My Baby, 1965, Ain't Too Proud to Beg, 1966, Beauty Is Only Skin Deep, 1966, I Know, I'm Losing You, 1966, All I Need, 1967, Loneliness Made Me Realize, It's You That I Need, 1967, I Wish It Would Rain, 1967, and I Could Never Love Another, After Loving You, 1968. Ruffin also shared lead vocals on the 1967 hit single, You're My Everything, with Eddie Kendricks. Ruffin's tenure with The Temptations was marked by his passionate and dramatic performances, winning over audiences and fans. Away from performances, he was also instrumental in masterminding of their trademark four-headed microphone stand, which enabled the other members to sing and do their dances, without having to crowd around one microphone. However, by 1967, fame and success had taken the better of him. The once humble and hardworking David Ruffin was no more. His ego, doubled. The fame entered his head and he started seeing himself as more superior in the group. By 1967, he was unbearable. He became addicted to cocaine and began missing rehearsals and performances. He would also refuse to travel with the other temptations and instead opted to travel in a limo with his then-girlfriend Tammy Terrell. The renaming of the Supremes to Diana Ross and the Supremes further doubled his pride, to push for the group's name to be changed to David Ruffin and the Temptations, something that didn't sit well with the other members. He also began inquiring into the Temptations' financial records, demanding an accounting of the group's money, something that caused friction between him and Gordy. In 1968, Ruffin's behavior crossed a line when he prioritized attending a performance with his new girlfriend Barbara Gale Martin, over a scheduled show with the Temptations. As a result, he was fired from the group and replaced by Dennis Edwards, a former member of the Contours. Though Ruffin himself personally encouraged Edwards to take his place, he began turning up unannounced at Temptations concerts during Edwards' first few dates with the group. He would suddenly walk onto the stage, take the microphone from Edwards' hands, and steal the show, embarrassing the group but entertaining the fans. The group thought Ruffin had changed and decided to take him back but on the next show, he arrived very late prompting the group to come to a consensus to drop him for good. Ruffin decided enough was enough and wanted to leave Motown Records entirely but his contract was binding. He then embarked on a solo career releasing his first single, My Whole World Ended in 1969, a song that would reach the US pop and R&B top 10. In 1970, Ruffin recorded an album with his brother Jimmy, I Am My Brother's Keeper, for which they had minor hits with, When My Love Hand, Comes Tumbling Down, and Your Love Was Worth Waiting For. His next official release for Motown did not arrive until 1973. While his solo career initially showed promise, Ruffin went into decline, reportedly in part because of his cocaine addiction and the lack of support from Motown due to his rebellious nature. He continued struggling even after leaving Motown juggling between Warner Brothers Records and RCA Records where he was accompanied by Eddie Kendricks, who chose to rekindle their friendship when Kendricks himself started experiencing problems with The Temptations. This period as a solo artist also came with problems. In 1978, he was arrested at a birthday party in Memphis and charged with disorderly conduct. In 1982, Ruffin was charged $5,000 and sentenced to six months in a low-security prison in Teyote, Indiana for failing to pay taxes amounting to more than $310,000 over three years, from 1975 to 1977. He served four months and was released early for good behavior. In July 1987, Ruffin spent a night in jail after he was arrested after a raid at a Detroit house. He was charged with cocaine possession with intent to distribute less than 20 grams of cocaine. 
he was released after posting a $1,500 bond. All these was due to the fact that he hanged around the bad guys of the hood, and had no brotherhood like when he was with the Temptations who kept him in check. Away from that, fast forward in 1989, after being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with the Temptations, Ruffin, Kendrick and Dennis Edwards began touring and recording as Ruffin and Kendrick Edwards, former leads of the Temptations. After completing a successful month-long tour of England with Kendricks and Edwards, on June 1, 1991, Ruffin tragically died from an accidental overdose of crack cocaine. He collapsed at a crack house in West Philadelphia, where he had been with a friend, who drove him to hospital where he would be pronounced dead. Although the cause of death was ruled an accident, Ruffin's family and friends suspected foul play, claiming that a money belt containing $40,000 was missing from his body. Ruffin's funeral was held at New Bethel Baptist Church in Detroit. Surviving members of The Temptations sang, My Girl. Stevie Wonder and Aretha Franklin also sang at the funeral. Michael Jackson volunteered to pay for the funeral expenses, but did not attend the service. He left behind four kids, three daughters from his first marriage with Sandra Barnes, and one son with his long-term girlfriend, Jenna Sapia. Despite the sad ending, David Ruffin's name will always be among those greats who had a big impact in this genre of music. What fond memories do you have of him? Do tell us in the comment section. Also, don't forget to subscribe. What music did you grow up listening to? Well, I grew up listening to Spiritual. Uh, those are my brother Jimmy and Rita May and my father.